Now the town, the taxpayers pay for all these sewer improvements. We're already paying a bond and um, over $7 million for this project. And uh, now luckily we won the lawsuit and we're using the proceeds from the lawsuit to do this correction and all the engineering and to try to show that we do have a sustainable long-term solution that's going to be acceptable to the state and the feds. Uh, and again, it's not an expansion, it's again just repairing uh, the surface that was damaged by the uh, mm -hmm. excess uh, groundwater breakouts. Mm -hmm. And it's the same project, and again, it was always, it's been, and, and it went through again at that time, so Tuckenborough did take an active part mm -hmm. in the review process. So there were hearings, uh, Tuckenborough appropriated money, they did a study, uh, they were involved, the state uh, found a finding of no significant impact for the project if it would have worked as designed. And uh, what we're trying to do now is to make it work as original design with, with the flaws. And uh, we think we figured out the problems and how to correct it. And I sat at a table with the uh, Tuftonboro Selectmen and Wolfboro Selectmen, and I think the Tuftonboro Conservation Commission down at mm -hmm. the community center. And we had a large discussion about this project all the way through. Um, we also, when this came up, we had the spray fields. We cut spray fields off that was going into um, Mirror Lake. Mirror Lake. You know, and that's why I was pointing out we shut down number one because it really wasn't, you know, working well. We, we've tried to be that good neighbor. And when we've heard the concerns of Tufton Borough, we've invited you to a table and met with us as we looked at trying to find the solution all the way through. I was there, <clears throat> I was elected in 2005 when the administrative order got put on the town. And I've been working with <clears throat> the town administrator, um, town manager, and Dave Ford to, to solve this. I was there for the lawsuit, you know. It was not what we wanted to go through. Um, and we thought we had a solution. We didn't know that they were hiding things on us and we didn't know that they knew that this thing wasn't going to work. You know, and we wa that's why we won. And now we're trying to be responsible to fix the bre what happened there with a solution that'll work. And our affluent is excellent. We're not in there polluting with people here wastewater and they think we're just uh, dumping raw sewage in there. We're not. It's gone through a lot of processing before it even hits that brook. I know we have a couple of members of our Conservation Commission here in the room today. Um, and you've had some conversations with them about some different kinds of testing on, on, on the effluent. Is that right? Yes, we have. Uh, Steve, do you have a question or a comment? Or Larry? I, I have to start with saying I'm disappointed. I think when two communities have a problem, you start by seeing what you can work out. Uh, maybe there's a time to play hardball. I don't think you start with that. You start with trying to find a solution that both parties can be happy with. And, you know, uh, Dave's kept us informed all the way. We haven't always been happy with it, but we've, we've known what was going on. And then I want to let Larry say something about what one of, one of our most recent objectives of what to try to accomplish out there. Go ahead, Larry. Um, when I joined the Conservation Commission uh, three years ago, uh, my background uh, was working with the state of Massachusetts in water pollution, wetlands, um, and uh, a number of other projects. And when I learned of this project, the thing that caught my eye right, right away is how close it was to the border of Tuckenborough. And the fact that the aquifer, for all intents and purposes, is in, in Tuftonboro. So that becomes, whatever problems there are, become Tuftonboro's problems. Um, we felt that we could work with the town of Wolfboro, and we have. The issues that I experienced um, with Massachusetts and with some of these systems are the regulatory requirements and the science. The permit that uh, currently um, addresses this site, it meets those requirements. The primary issue is 
They cannot have a breakout, a discharge, directly into surface water. So their efforts are to get this into the groundwater and have it come up, as, as, as Dave mentioned, uh, percolate up into the, the bottom of the stream. So there is no direct discharge. The permit requirements are primarily based on standards that they can make, and they have made. You know, with the primary issue, as, as David uh, described, is phosphorus, because that is the limiting nutrient for uh, fresh water, and that, that really uh, accelerates the uh, algae growth and, and problems, no foil, etc. When I looked at the issue, the issue is, is for per things, unfortunately, that are not, again, this is where the science comes in, new pollutants, issues that are on the horizon that Massachusetts, virtually every state in the country has to deal with, but their, their, their level of complexity in terms of their analysis and so forth, so forth, have not reached, in a lot of cases, the stage where they now can be a specific permit item. For example, uh, we have the PFOS issue with the flame retardants. That is new, relatively new on the horizon. The state of New Hampshire has taken uh, direct action with that. What I was concerned about are things that have come under, it's called the emerging contaminants of concern. Those, cons those are primarily pharmaceuticals, disinfectants, um, a number of those things. And there's a whole host of them. There's plenty of evidence that, that these are contaminants of significant concern, but they're not identified specifically by the state or necessarily even EPA that you have to have this limit. So we, looking at this and realizing those things, we began to talk with Wolf Roar about those concerns. And Dave, very much to his credit, said, uh, I agree. And we began to craft an idea about how we could do this. And one of those things was to actually have a study done. And we, and, and Dave said he knew contacts in um, uh, U University of New Hampshire, possibly Plymouth State, that could begin to look at some of these issues. I did a fair amount of uh, online research with this. Out of the blue, looking at one of the papers that was addressed, USGS was one of, and I wanted to talk to one of the the principal investigators of that to get a sense of what they did and how they did and whether or not we could do the study. USGS, Professor uh, uh, Joe Ayot, Dr. Ayot, said uh, we could do that. I was stunned. We had a meeting here um, with Dave Mitch Locker, who was the permit. Uh, well, we right up for the groundwater bureau, bureau the groundwater GDS. and we talked about some things USGS said we can do a study and we will do a study for all those things the concern again to me is 15 years down the road when we find out that uh, this particular pharmaceutical is wreaking havoc either with the biota or God forbid public health you have a baseline of what those things are in there, as best you can do it with the current standards. And you can then back off on the other end, on the, on the Wolfboro side, and say, okay, uh, we, we're gonna ban these, these things from discharge into the septic, into the system. They affect um, groundwater from septic systems. They're, they're all there. The issue though is, for, to me is with Tuffenboro, and we have a potential solution. The issue is, to me, is getting that funded. Um, Joe estimated um, the, the study would uh, be $175,000. I don't know the particulars uh, of Wolfboro's uh, financial situation, I do know they had a settlement. And to me, and and again, that's Wolfboro's business where they get the money. But Dave and I kind of 
skirted around the issue where that money could might be able to come from. It, it still is a grant, so remember they, they were going to grant seventy five thousand, and we were going to come up with a hundred thousand. So we okay. were working on, on on trying to fund that study with this. So within our so so it's down a hundred. So it's down down seventy five thousand. And I we talked to Joe. Joe uh, talked to Dave. I guess last week, yep. and I actually saw Joe um, um, at a conference that I attended. It's possible. Does it solve all the issues? No, but it, to me, it gives um, both Wolfboro and Tuffenboro a sense of what these potential pollutants are, because they're already addressing the phosphorus and all the things that are on the permit requirement. But it's a, it gives them a sense of what to look for down the road. Um, one of the issues, one of the other, is that enough? I could talk about this for a long when, time. When, when was the meeting with that fellow? I'm sorry? When did you meet with the US? Uh, last fall. Oh, last fall. Mm -hmm. and, and they came in with a proposal. And it got into, well, Dave was, had all kinds of projects. Uh, we kind of let it sit for a while. Dave said, I think he was at that time, and again, I don't know. Well, all we say we'd be, you know, because we work on the funding, like, you know, so this year's funding, we, we appropriated 500000 of that. There were certain monies that we thought was, was suitable for the, uh, negotiated settlement with the trust about the land and then we're hoping that some of this money would be able to go to the study. Uh, the Witten Trust is fighting very hard to get every penny they can out of us and, and we thought they were going too far. Uh, clearly uh, eminent domain is a very serious uh, legal action. It is allowed by state law. Uh, our attorney has told us if we can take this. This is a necessity that we have here because of the public benefit and that we can cross town lines, that it's not uh, uh, it impossible so that based on our journey we don't want to do it we'd hope that we can uh, uh, agree to a, uh, a purchase sale but um, if without them in domain they could say well give us ten million dollars you need it you got to have it so why wouldn't they call this up for as much as they possible and again if we were Walmart and we needed that land for a driveway well that's that's the way it goes but we are not Walmart we, we are a government entity that has this right for eminent domain which we don't want to use it but we're using it as leverage now to hopefully bring them to the table because if they were to go in the domain, most of this land, one of the sheets I showed you, is, is uh, it's wetlands, it's steep slopes, and it's not developed. So the land is not worth a whole heck of a lot, although they, they are fighting hard to, to get every penny they can, and I don't blame them for it. But we have to fight back too because we still have to answer to our taxpayers, and, and while we want to be more than fair, we, we can't be... Uh, held up uh, here and that's that's why the eminent domain is going on and until we get that issue resolved and uh, hopefully it will get resolved uh, we can't commit to the study really no I mean, i'm lying to you I'm here no, i'm not no not i'm not saying all this bs okay Dave. why do you have to I'm say gonna, that i'm gonna you're not sticking me every I'm time gonna, i'm gonna present as being in in total interest of my citizens that's it i'm only worried about tougher i asked you really because you're currently affecting, or were currently affecting, if you're not injecting now, the 19 Mile Bay watershed. So why wouldn't you have taken that grant and the study, put it together? It's you're going to need it. No, we don't. Don't, have, don't need it. We don't have to do any of it. In fact, all we're trying to do is being good guys because they brought it up. Because I so was talking to you atheists. We do not, not have to do that. It's not required. Not required by. DES or whatever, but it's it. You don't see it as a requirement of our collegial negotiations. Well, I think I'm not sure we're having any. It sounds like you're trying to make me look at the bad guy. Wolf Bros all bad. I'm trying to is... find something good that you've done. Well, I think you have to realize we did do a Warren article, but we have money, we have land, and all sorts of things right. in there. And you know, you have to go to the taxpayers. So. It depends upon what money we have left after we get the what is so probate. all of your settlement went into the general fund or and un does no it's it's else. it's in a separate CD and it's going to go for the solution to right. the problem so the taxpayer doesn't have to pay on top of the seven million dollar so bond so the what study we, wouldn't be inclus included in that solution it we haven't gotten to there we're still working in I and I. Dave is talking to your conservation commission. We had X amount that we appropriated. We're still negotiating the land. What we have left out of there will affect whether we can do it right now. You know, I, I knew he was talking about it, but I, didn't ha I don't have a figure when I saw that. 
we knew that the big variable was that land. What? My mother always said that listen and silent are spelled with the same letters. I say that to at least bring a smile during this discussion. I've been on the Conservation Commission, I've been a selectman. Uh, first of all, this area is not Three Mile Island, so I want to make sure people understand that. It's costly for everyone. I think we need to be balanced in our passion and our problem solving, and I've experienced in the last few years that we have that. I've taken every walk, I've read every piece of paper. I'm for clean air, I'm for clear water no matter where I go in Tufton Borough or throughout New Hampshire. I've told you more than once, I trust but verify. Uh, I think we need to uh, take a time out here. I will say, Dave, I worked with you on a number of projects in this town and in, in this area, and I've always enjoyed your passion, your honesty, and your approach. Please don't stop. I think we should end this conversation for today. Fran, can I ask a question? Uh, okay. The difference I want to understand is between the spray irrigation field that you were shut off by the state and the condition of the water that uh, is at the RIB. What's the difference in uh, contaminants? So when uh, all the uh, wastewater is collected, it goes through a treatment system. And again, if, if you're interested in seeing our treatment facility, more than happy to give you a, a, uh, a tour of the facility, um, which again, we did win an award, best plant in, 19, in 2016. It goes up to a 90 million gallon storage pond. So there is where uh, it sits. And then from there, uh, last year, we took 30 million gallons and we did cut back. So we had over 100 acres, now we're at 40 acres spraying with intermittent spraying. Uh, we can now spray without runoff, so we sprayed 30 million gallons on the spray area uh, last year, and we discharged about 70 million gallons at the RABs. It's the same uh, treated effluent. Same condition. Yes. And you were saying uh, it was said that the runoff into Merrill Lake from that spray irrigation was a reason the state of New Hampshire asked you to stop. They, they uh, issued this administrative order because uh, you know where the ski area is? I know what's here. So on either side, we're spraying, and then the spray was getting into surface water, uh, leading down to the pond down by Moody's uh, pit, and then out yeah. and into, yeah. into Mirror Lake. So okay. once we found that out, we stopped that area right away, and uh, we continued to cut back until we have now, and then we stopped the way we're spraying, so we have no runoff. So the water now that spray is going into the ground and, and back with transpiration. So that is working properly. So the, the water that was used there is it the same condition as the water at the RIB? It's the same going in, but it's different because when it goes into the RIB, it still has small amounts like 0 0.4 to 0.5 milligrams per liter of phosphorus. Okay. So it gets taken out in the sand, as it, so the breakout is actually cleaner than what's going in. You got a saturation point there too. Uh, where? As the, as the phosphorus is absorbed by the sands. Again, we did a study of that this year too because we're concerned this phosphorus is being captured in the first couple of feet. So it's not uh, in, uh, well. Then you've got more added into it. If it's, if it's saturated, it's got to go somewhere. Again, we have a mass there that can collect it. We went down deep. It's not transmitting. So there's a certain time we can haul that off. The point I want to make is the water going well, was going into Merrill Lake, and the water going into 19 Mile Brook are the same. No, they're not. Because the one the Mirror Lake was surface water, so the water was sprayed. It it was reduced but it still had that 0.4 to 0.5 milligrams per liter phosphorus. The phosphorus traveled on the surface. It didn't get tied up in the soil because it was supposed to go in the ground. So, the, so Mirror Lake was getting surface water, even though it was diluted, so the levels were much level, uh, smaller getting into Mirror Lake. In, in the RIBs, that 0.4 is now reduced to 0 0.01 down at the bottom, and then it's diluted, so it's at background levels by the time it hits the brook. So 19 Mile Brook is not seeing any phosphorus above background, where Mural Lake was seeing phosphorus above background. What I'm saying is, once you have saturation of your Sorry, plate, you yeah, and it's going to creep into my empty mile work. <clears throat> Again, that's what either you don't know how hydrology works because underground it may go above as you say, but it may stay underground and find its way into the Esca. 
whatever your argument is about it not going into Mirror Lake, it's still the Indian Mile Brook does feed, feed Mirror Lake. All depends on what the beaver do. So the argument is Mirror Lake is still getting affected by the RIB. And 19 Mile Brook is getting infected by the RIB. And my 1,300 feet on my 19 Mile Brook is being affected by the RIB. I want to see it stopped. So you want to eliminate it? Right. Well, again, uh, you made the statements, there is impact, but it's not environmentally significant impact. So the fact that you, there may be some uh, negligible amount that you can measure, it's not having a, a, a significant environmental impact. So again, my job is to make sure that that continues that way. We'll continue the testing to show you that it's not doing any harm to the brook. Um, but again, I, I can't, uh, again, the, the difference again is the phosphorus. There's no phosphorus getting to 19 mile brook, and that's where the damage would be with regard to increased eutrophication or growth of. Uh, well, well, I question your assumption there because nowhere have I seen any indication of any testing along the edge of 19, brook, 19 mile brook that I own. No, we haven't gone beyond our property because we, we do it on the property and on the Witten property and we take one, we used to take a sample as it come into 19 Mile Bay, but the last sample was at 109A there by the brook. So you're, you're downstream of that, right? Yeah. And we could, we can do some testing. We've always offered to do whatever uh, to, to help people uh, leave them that there's not a significant impact here, environmental issue, uh, but it's regulatory. We do want to get it corrected. And uh, again, we've been more than happy to continue working with the Conservation Commission on these studies. Again, uh, the, the fact of uh, that the PC uh, pharmaceuticals and personal care products are not regulated right now, it is a big issue long term. Uh, the process we use through the aeration in our treatment process, uh, through the, uh, the pond, and then through the groundwater, we have four or five different mechanisms that are going to have better options of retreating those uh, uh, pharmaceuticals and personal care products than most treatment plants. Those, those also are there, people on boats, uh, stuff uh, washing their boats, uh, people uh, in the marinas, uh, the camps, septic systems all have these contaminants. We all put suntan lotion on, we jump in the water, That those are personal care products. We all, uh, not we all, but a lot of people take medicines, it goes through their bodies and comes out. Uh, so what we're going to find in the study, I think, it would be more for our protection than it's going to be an eye-opener, that the background levels are already pretty significant. And that what we're putting in is reduced, even though we are concentrated. And again, as an environmental engineer, I do believe we are going to get to this study. What hopeful is we can negotiate the land, get that squared away, uh, get our permits, uh, begin on the, like I say, we, we're going to uh, work with DES on a schedule uh, to complete the permitting, design, and construction and that we also can phase the project as I talked to uh, Joy Yacht and he said that we could phase it over a two-year period in which we could maybe start some of it this fall and then we could then continue the next year uh, with it and it would be a very important study not only for talking to Rufa, but it actually would add uh, the science that's not lacking right now throughout the rest of the country. Well I guess my concern is the lake is the same lake as Wolfboro as it is in Duftonboro now I'm a Lake Lake monitor and I have been doing it for 20 some odd years now and last summer they did a very extensive deep water testing, uh, dissolved oxygen and uh, the whole spiel. I was duly flabbergasted by the effort they put into testing. I haven't seen the results yet. But that has, is that a benchmark? No, but that's an indication of the condition of the waters that are in 19 Mile Bay. Air estuary, from its estuary. Uh, I continued monitoring for the state of New Hampshire, and my reports have not been forthright. They, you haven't received any reports. I've got the pressure then to bring, you know, give me the data. I want the data. They say the lake is aging normally. Well, we don't know what normal means, but the lake is aging. And there are significant uh, invasive species of weeds in the in the area, several in uh, the Thuptonboro uh, realm. Anything that would increase or affect their continued growth is very concerning to me, and I don't think the state of New Hampshire wants to be able to answer to any public uh, disclosure of that information. 
it's a jewel, we want to keep it a jewel, but the more you use it, the more you, well, it ain't, ain't gonna hurt it. It's had it to uh, continue, it's gonna hurt, it's eventually gonna affect everybody. Well, one of the things that we're doing now is a watershed study, okay, for the piece of the lake that encompasses Tuftonboro, Moulinboro Bay down to Winter Harbor. Uh, and the contract for the consultant, is has that been awarded or we, we're ready to award that? Is that right? It hasn't been announced. Okay, Man, so I can't, anyway, I can't so that. that's going to that's gonna help us. Well, the output of that is going to be a roadmap for us going forward. So as we look at, at stuff that goes into the lake, we'll understand places that we can help ourselves in removing stuff going into the lake that uh, that will help improve the water quality. Uh, I, I view this pharmaceutical personal care product study, if there's, you know, the sooner we can get some data there, regardless of whether it's something that uh, is currently uh, within, uh, you know, permittable le levels, uh, the more we can learn about this now, uh, the better off going forward. And you know, we want to continue to do everything we can to to protect the lake as well as uh, the watershed areas running into the lake, uh, 19 Mile Brook being one of them. Uh, we got what we got now at the RIB. You're working on a solution to the to the problem, and uh, it's. Um, it's important that, uh, that, that that a solution that works gets there. I know you're doing development work and testing to get there, but uh, Wolfboro and Tuftonboro got left holding the bag when the RIB didn't work. Um, and uh, it affects both communities. Um, uh, the effect on Wolfboro is uh, greater economic or fiscally and in terms of you know we're under these deadlines to get this 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 and this done but uh, as I said before uh, we really want as we go forward to have a situation where um, uh, the uh, we've got things in place to to, to protect the land uh, and to identify issues going forward and deal with them uh, in, in a way that is not uh, adverse to the taxpayers of Tuftonboro. Uh, right, well, I don't see any money coming from the Tuftonboro taxpayers again, but we have been trying to keep you informed. Uh, we are with New Hampshire DES. Uh, Tracy Wood is the uh, head of the Wastewater Bureau. She's the one that's, uh, again, reviewing and approving the reports, approving the long term plan, which is to restore this area. And again, our plan, as I stated pretty clearly, is to acquire that land either through lease or purchase with the trust and to do everything we're saying and we're not intending on moving anywhere for 20, 50 years. So I heard two people say that they'd like to see us go somewhere else. Um, if you're going to fight that battle, you, you, you better start, you know, go to Tracy Woods and see if you can put a stay on stuff. I, I don't think so. I think we, the momentum is, is gone here. We've been for eight years saying we've been doing nothing but fixing the site, staying here and going to be here long term. So that was always the direction I was going up until today. So I was a little surprised and taken back by selecting all these uh, positions. And, and uh, again, well, I, 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 I can understand your concerns very much. Just to clarify things, I'm not going to be in a position not to fight this, just for, merely for the optics. I mean, you are, for all intents and purposes, the average citizen in Tuftonboro is saying to themselves, Wolf Pro just wants to pump their septic into Tuckerberg. That's that's the bottom line. But that's so irresponsible. Are you saying something? So that's irresponsible. So that's how people think. That's how people think, David. But they, because you people like you make statements on No, untrue. it's not like people like me making you statements. You did because the front it's page. She printed it in the front page, you said it, and it's not true. So maybe we shouldn't be in the newspaper. But the Well point maybe we should is, check your facts before the, you talk. Well, wait a minute. Okay? You're looking to pick up property in Tufton Grove for what purpose? To restore the wetlands that have been damaged, the groundwater discharge. By your wastewater? Absolutely, our okay. system. So it is your wastewater that's going to be going into Tufton Grove? They treated that form, yes. Okay. But versus all I'm saying, versus spills, you're saying that somehow all I'm we're saying septic is that up here. You're, you've moved the problem to the border. 
and now you want to take the problem over the border. It's already and if, over there, and I think that's the difference. It's already uh, over there, and we want to fix we, what's over there. Right, and I, I yeah, fully we'll appreciate you want to fix it. Eight, ten years ago, mm -hmm. when, the, when the RIV was cited. Uh, and approved and, by DES in 2007, right, right. so it's been there ten years. I, I, will, I will make the observation, uh, and, and I'm sure DES is doing everything that they're required to do, but um, it's unfortunate that in the distribution of all this stuff from DES, nothing comes to Tuffinboro from DES. I mean, they probably got regs that say don't doesn't have to go to Tuffinboro because here's what has to do. But I'm just saying that it's exactly which yeah. is why I went out of my way to send you copies of everything. You, you, you anything did. you guys want, right? Anyone who wants to see, talk, or get, I'd be more than happy to. And any anyone, in, 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 especially property owners are downstream, I'd be more than happy to explain to them so they wouldn't have the fear that's being put in people's minds when people use the wrong terms when they talk about the facility. But, uh, but the, I'm just, uh, you understand what I'm saying. DES is doing what the regs say they need to do, but. And all, that's right, they're exactly what they do. They just, that's, that's right. right. And we're so saying we do, be, we're going you, beyond you're, you, 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 You're going beyond You're right giving now. us the information. We're not a party at the table with DES. So when we get to a position where we come up with a list of things which will make us feel comfortable mm -hmm. letting you come into Tuftamuro. What do we have to stand on? Nothing. DES isn't going to require you to do that massive study. DES isn't going to require you to put in monitoring down the stream. There, we have not been in the process of the permitting. So we haven't been able to put Tuftamuro conditions into the permitting process. We're so we're si we're in a situation where you're here today, and you know you're a little upset because somebody's taking a hard line with you. No, I think I think the reason why he's upset and we're and I feel the same way is we've put in more monitoring wells. We've taken on a huge amount of uh, of uh, information, and I believe the Tufton Borough Conservation Commission sent and talked to DES. Mm -hmm. You have been at the table. You've been at the table with selectmen to selectmen. So whether you... Since the failure? Uh, you went on tours, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Since yeah. the failure? Yeah. yeah. And we've done that, to, and we've tried to reach out. They're sending you that. It's our good faith to you at Tuftenboro. No, in I Tuftenboro fully appreciate and, the, and what, what has happened with all the reporting. I'm not questioning your veracity there, but at this point in time, you're moving the project into Tuftenburg. See, and that's where we differ. That's oh. where the big difference is because that was always part of it. And that we had a spill there and we want to fix it and we want to take responsible and keep it clean. Break up, and, I mean, break. <laughs> yeah. But break out. But we want to take responsibility for that space. That's what we want. We're not moving our project further down the thing. We, we would like to put in some of these this, these pilots here to, may, to be able to put it back to functioning the way it is. No, I appreciate and all, that's good, what, all good stuff. And I appreciate the efforts that you're making to make this project work. I'm not talking about that aspect of it. What I'm talking about is the optics of it. You're now moving your project into Tuftamuro. We've got to talk about that. And it doesn't 